Welcome, DC and comic fans, to another episode of the Lunch Table Podcast, brought to you by Anchor, where we discuss the latest and greatest in entertainment and pop culture. My name is Dylan. Joining me on today's discussion is my amazing co-host, Akram. What's going on, man? I am doing great. I love that. Amazing. There you go. You got to call me that each time. How are you, Dylan? How's everything? <laughs> I'm good, man. I, I'm excited to talk about this movie. There's just so much to unpack. Yeah, absolutely, man. I love this. Today's episode, obviously, we're talking about the wildest movie out this year, James Gunn's Suicide Squad. Be prepared as there may be spoilers ahead, so if you don't want your mind blown like certain characters in this movie, <laughs> go watch it first and then listen to this review. All right. Uh, I don't even know where to begin. There's just so much to unpack. Oh, yeah. Uh, I guess my first question is, does this feel more like a film or a movie? That's a, that's a really good question because I haven't really thought about that. I've never been asked that before. Uh, you know, it's funny because James Gunn has a particular direction, you know, for his directing in general. So I guess it's kind of 50-50, you know. Obviously, some moments will be like a popcorn flick, you know. And in some moments, really delve deep into characters, which I love about James Gunn. You know, he breaks down characters and makes mm-hmm. them, you know, he, hum, you know, he gives them humanity. And that's the best part of 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 his films uh how about you like what do you think i i agree it's definitely like a tarantino kind of style where it's like it's action heavy but then the moments where you know you get like a lot of that you know character dialogue and exposition it definitely like humanizes the characters more uh this movie definitely defies a lot of like tropes you see in like you know marvel movies or you know comic book style uh films or tv shows it's a lot like watching the boys or like Invincible. And that just I'm not just saying that because of like the graphic content, obviously, but you know, there's a lot more depth into like the characters' MOs and just like seeing how they relate to like how it how it drives like the plot forward of it more than you know you would see in like a Marvel film, I guess. Um Yeah. Definitely. They take a lot of these like these like B list villains and just turn them into like likable characters. I love that so much. Yeah, real obscure characters. That's cool. I mean, I I definitely yeah. It's it's. I guess when see DC's like giving free range now to a lot of people, and again, the industry is evolving, and a lot more directors can do what they want. And I don't know how much freedom he had, but I I feel like this was pretty free. You know, this is definitely his vision. I well, feel. this is definitely a big step up from the previous movie. I feel like there's less studio involvement in this one and more vision, which I think they wanted for this movie. I guess that's why they brought James Gunn in. Right. He he knows what he wants. Like you can tell just from like beginning to end, this was definitely something that was like a collaborative um, vision together. You know, it doesn't feel like there was too many different style choices or, or, you know, different ideas. Um, That's how I feel about the last movie. Honestly, I feel like the last movie, they were just like, there were great moments and great characters that just like it didn't come together correctly. Yeah. It didn't stew together, right? Um, with this exactly. movie, I feel like that's the opposite. It's like a lot of the characters and um the plot feels like it comes it tie ins nicely. Oh yeah, it's so balanced. I, I feel like everything just it, it was just the right amount of everything that it needed to mm-hmm. have for the time frame it, it had. So I really enjoyed it. I, I I enjoyed like the character development for like Bloodsport. Um, even Peacemaker, that was really, that was, that threw me off, you know, and especially a certain character's death. Um, and there's like, again, going, harkening back to the thing at the point I made earlier about the bringing back humanity, like even like the bar scene or something like that. It's just like, I love, I love that scene. Cause you know, you, you do want to see these characters and, and how will they react? I mean, how will they be? And just like regular civilian attire and like regular you right. know, in a regular place so even like the like the non like human characters just felt like so emotional like uh king shark yeah like, where, that, that one scene where he's in the um in like the fish tank yeah and he, he just kind of like just wants friends you know i it's, know that's, like james gunn just makes so many good choices in this movie so fun to watch I know, and and like when they were like riding the bus, and like he he like peered upon, uh, he he like looked at these couples kissing, um, mm. earlier, and it looked like he he wanted something like that, that type of affection, mm. I guess. Um, he's he's like the Suicide Squad version of Groot, I guess, you know. Mm. 
Yeah, yeah so. definitely. I could see that. It's, uh, it's kind of different from King Croc in a way. I mean, King Croc was, um, I don't know. He was he was kind of like that outcast of the group because he wasn't like completely human. But, you know, I feel like he he related more to the, the team than King Shark did. Yeah, because, you know, the thing is, King Shark knows he doesn't know too much. He's a little bit of a dummy. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. he's like kind of oblivious to like certain aspects. Right. But with Killer Croc, he, I guess, accepts who he is. And like he said, he accepts himself. Like, at least he knows he's in the sewers, right? He said that line in the mm -hmm. first Suicide Squad movie. And it's like, so he accepts more, whereas Killer, or all these Jays, whatever, <laughs> King Shark, he uh, he basically is just a big dummy. But he has emotions, right? He can understand. He's got I a heart, it. yeah. He understands more through emotion rather than, mm -hmm. rather than logic, so. And yeah, I just, like, I appreciate so much chemistry between, like, the actors and the, like, the characters like you see that obviously with like um rat catcher and uh blood sport but then there's like the more subtle ones where it's like between like rick flag and harley like you see like that that uh that kinship that yeah you know, that bleeds over from like the last film i love that smile when they were doing that badass walk in the rain and like, they both looked at each other man that's I, another I, thing like the visuals in this movie are so good it's just great like great palette it's surreal. It's like yeah. you don't even know. Like that's why I, I like ask. Like, is it like you're watching a movie or a film? Because it's like there's so many great moments where it's like you don't even know what you're watching, but it's just so satisfying. Well, that's that's credits to the director. It's not even if you're watching a movie or a film. You're watching Jane's Gunn's mind, imagination, right there. You know what I mean? It's so hard to tell because that's when you give free range to a director like him. There you go. Especially so you could see what imagine what he could do with an R-rated Guardians of the Galaxy uh, right. movie too. You know, and and that's a great thing for picking him because he uh, he mastered Guardians of the Galaxy. You know that whole tone. Yeah. That tone from Guardians basically set like off this whole thing. Now this is like set mm -hmm. in stone how Guardians will always be like. So I feel like he set another uh, benchmark for how Suicide Squad should be in the future or Task Force mm -hmm. X. Yeah, definitely. He's definitely an appropriate choice for this movie. He knows how to juggle multiple characters with different MOs, um, mm. especially like a lot of darker characters. So he he definitely knows what he's doing as far as like like the plot and character development. Yeah, let me um, ask you something real fast. What do you what do you think about Deadshot not appearing in a film? So we were talking about that earlier. Like some characters yeah. didn't appear. Yeah, I mean the whole cast is phenomenal. I mm -hmm. think. Idris was a great substitute for Deadshot, right. um, but Idris Idris doesn't feel like a substitute. He kind of like helms the movie in his own way, mm -hmm. rather than feeling like a stand-in. Um, I know Will Smith had some like scheduling conflicts with the movie. That's why he didn't he couldn't make it for this one. Um, I mean, it's great that he's still in the universe, you know, and he he's still in good standing with the with the film. I guess I don't know. I think um, I didn't like the. Well, because like the daughter thing kind of felt too much like Deadshot. Yeah, that was with the uh, blood yeah, I feel like that, like they kept that, like they were planning to do like that with Deadshot, and then they just kept it over, and it just went into like Bloodsport's mo. Right. Um. So I thought that was a little weird or like formulaic, but I do like Bloodsport's character a lot. I liked him more than I thought I was gonna do, because like in the trailer, like they kind of like just show him as like you know like another hitman, um, that just like shot superman with a kryptonite bullet i'm like all right well anybody can do that but then watching the film it's like he 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 leads this team like so well and he he really like masters the role uh really good and it's funny because like idris is like in so many movies now and he even crossed over from marvel yeah. um from heimdall but yeah like him um john cena and uh, i forget the actor who plays rick flag uh but that trio like really like led this cast really well yeah absolutely i forgot his name too i was just gonna remind you i don't know why we always draw blanks for like <laughs> when we're recording but yeah uh you know again will smith would have been great but idris is his own character right even if he, that whole father is you know father and daughter thing is but honestly it was like way more i guess because rated r too but it was like way more i think nuanced in a sense of like that shot like it felt very pg the relationship he he had with his daughter right whereas here it felt like really more realistic i guess like there's a lot of more there's a lot of pent-up anger right mm -hmm. 
to be expelled. So um, I love that moment at the end too, where she sees her dad and like she's really right. proud of him. Right? It's kind of like like a foil in a way, because like Deadshot was like he was kind of like a good man that just played a bad guy, and then like Idris is just like a bad dude who ends up turning into a good guy in a way. Very good point. Yeah, I, I, I definitely agree with you. And I loved like his abilities. I don't know much about Bloodsport back then. Again, these like Suicide Squad is all about obscurity, right? So it's mm -hmm. like I never really knew about Bloodsport, but he definitely differs greatly, I think, from uh, Deadshot. And, and because his whole armor, basically, that he's wearing is a weapon. You know, well, his armor, I think, is loyal, is loyal to like the newer Suicide Squad comics. Like the older one, it was kind of just like him. With just like a mask and just like camel armor and stuff, but I was love like a his KKK suit. member too back then in a in a. Oh really? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, I remember. <laughs> yeah, I say I don't, I don't, I don't follow Suicide Squad comics that much, yeah. but <laughs> but I love his armor, like all his gadgets and weapons, like that's cool. Yeah, everything he he had was just like I just want like that fucking gun he had at the end with the spinning. He used everything he has. That yeah. shit was wild. I was like, yo, where the did he like that was some yeah rocky raccoon shit <laughs> uh, yeah i know <laughs> with james dunn <laughs> i was like where the fuck did he pull that one out of <laughs> yeah, there you go james. even his helmet is like so badass like when he's just wearing his helmet and the fucking I never understood wife that, beater right <laughs> yeah i know but i never understood that it's like such an alien callback right and in the comics mm -hmm. i think it looked like that too it's not that they just said oh let's make it look like aliens i never understood that i was so weird when i first there's, saw it there's definitely like like callbacks to like guardians of the galaxy definitely this movie like you can see it's like james gunn style kind of like how tarantino does like he does like, you know signatures for like his older movies mm -hmm. but who is uh your favorite character in this movie i honestly it's hard to say uh there's a lot i know <laughs> i'm an old ball right and i guess i think about entertainment in general so like that my well my number one honestly is rick flag i know a lot of people probably will say blood sport or harley or something like that number one mm -hmm. is rick flag uh number two is rat catcher so those are my top two what about you rat catcher is my number one yeah i don't know she just like i wasn't expecting her to be so take on a like a predominant role at the end yeah. of the movie because like yeah. in the beginning she's just kind of like oh, okay well she's just like another addition to the team and then when you get towards like the middle and the end it's like she's the one that's like saving their asses <laughs> right yeah and such an emotional moment too and taika even got involved in this movie which is crazy because he's like in everything <laughs> yeah 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 well he was in that thor yeah so yeah um i don't know i, I guess i would mention blood sport as well but you know i guess that's the obvious one Mm -hmm. um king shark too i think king shark's like i put him in a different list because he's like one of the cutest characters like mm -hmm. if you need a mascot for certain movies like groot or whatever that's the king shark's your man basically. even polka dot man like had his moments where like he shined oh yeah now he's awesome i i feel like no he's really cool uh i felt uncomfortable with, like some of the mother <laughs> things going on but you see that's what i'm talking about like the way that james gunn you know stitches a film together it's just like it's so cool how he just ends up like that party scene or that dance scene and it's like the music and stuff and you're really feeling the moment all of a sudden it's just slow-mo of like all his mom his mother is like all around him and stuff <laughs> yeah. or even like the big mother there as i call that you know at the end i call that shit too like this is going to the spoilers but um when <laughs> when starro is like like rampaging the city like i told i told my friend matt he was sitting next to me i'm like watch watch he like see like a giant karen <laughs> like, like stopping the city <laughs> and the next thing you know cutscene it's like this giant mom <laughs> like destroying yeah. the city <laughs> i was like called it called it should have bet, bet money <laughs> right <laughs> that was great i mean and his powers he's extremely dangerous like and that's the thing here too it's like in the comics uh the obscure characters aren't really that dangerous maybe for like mm -hmm. one or two issues and then bye bye but like here everybody's extremely lethal you mm -hmm. know um what about, well, one thing that I actually, which irked me, but again, I think the best part about this film too, it keeps you on your feet and you don't know who will really die, right? Uh, we didn't expect a certain mm -hmm. character to die and then all of a sudden that character dies. So like in the beginning, right. I was like, oh man, I'm never going to see these characters again. It sucks. But again, it keeps you guessing. You know, what did you think about mm -hmm. some of the deaths that you see? Would you have liked to seen some uh, people <sighs> survive, I guess? All right. So we're getting into spoiler terror and terror now. So yeah, there was a lot of deaths, especially like <sighs> watching the first 20 minutes of this movie was a fucking roller coaster, like from beginning to end. Uh, there were like, 
yeah, there were characters where I feel like they they showed off to. I I guess this was like a misdirection from the trailers because they they showed off a lot of the characters in the trailer, and you think like they're gonna be like there like the entire movie, and then you're watching the fucking movie and the the beach scene happens and it's just a funeral the whole time. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean like Michael Rooker's character, like I thought they would keep him on a little bit longer. Like I didn't expect him to like die in like the first. 20 minutes of the movie especially like you know how close michael rooker and james gunn are so you think they would have like kept him around a little longer um pete davidson's care like blackguard like i didn't really care for it they still never explained like how he got in contact with the militia i feel yeah, like they should uh yeah that's like a plot hole um well, i guess it's just they felt like it wasn't that well i heard somewhere from a previous breakdown i watched it apparently amanda waller uh, constructed the scheme to have that team, which I can't imagine though, because Rick is going in right with with that team, the first team that everyone dies. But like apparently that's a distraction team, and then the other team is the one who's supposed to like really infiltrate, and that's why there was mm-hmm. no one there. So apparently like that was the, that was the thing. Yeah, I can't um, imagine Waller would like waste like resources, but she did say like she would do anything for, like for this specific mission so i wouldn't be well, surprised she I took guess, a lot of fucking like liberties in this movie <laughs> yeah well I, again there's like so many people going up against them it was a shit show right mm-hmm. so i guess like i would i that does make sense i guess from a tactical standpoint let them be the distraction and everyone some people mm-hmm. go in there um but yeah J- what's his name savan i uh i wanted to see more like what he could do that's that's the thing like some people who died i, I just wanted mm-hmm. to see more um, but I guess karma came when uh, he he killed the bird, and then all of a sudden the bird eats his right. brain later on. <laughs> yeah, he should have um, got he should have got the uh, the whistle <laughs> uh, arrow from yeah, I know. from Guardy. <laughs> he would have survived a lot longer. I know. I my well, I guess. Damn, actually, one of my favorite characters, which I think is your favorite character, is Weasel. I think that's uh, <laughs> both our favorite character. <laughs> Yo, that fucking thing was the weirdest shit I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I don't even think that was Weez. I think that was like a genetically hybrid crackhead thing that, that they just threw in the movie. <laughs> Afghan hound. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I love this place. He just pulled it for like the Mandalorian set or some shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> Wookie on drugs number five or some shit. <laughs> Bro, that's what happens when Wookie has rabies. <laughs> Yo, for real. <laughs> I love that. That like Weasel literally looked like Weasel had AIDS or like rabies. Literally, <laughs> <laughs> like honestly, <laughs> that was the representation Yo, of it. He looked like he snorted ten lines of coke before the film. <laughs> I know, probably after he comes back, they have to cut off his head to check if he has rabies. Right. <laughs> <laughs> or... Well, that's funny because like they never said like how long he was out, so he probably he was probably out cold for like the whole movie. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he uh no that, that's i love him javelin i wish i seen more of as well mm-hmm. doing some stuff um there's some characters like blackguard even i think blackguard's a oh what villain they said he's like a marksman or something i don't know i feel like there's like that's like the default superpower now <laughs> it's just like if you're a good shot then you're right you're automatically a super villain what did um, you think of peacekeeper actually that's a controversial one. Ooh, oh, Peacekeeper. That's like John oh Walker God. and Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Like, everybody Yo. hates him, but that means he did a good job. John Cena he really went. brung his game in this. This is, like, one of my favorite John Cena roles, actually, because, like, a lot yeah. of movies that he's in, like, I just can't stand him for some the reason. Marine, like, I remember the yeah. Marine movie a long time ago. Or... But, like, I think that's what James Gunn wanted was, like, he kind of plays, like, these douchey characters. And yeah. then I think that fits so well for Peacemaker because he's, like, oh, the Peacemaker. anti- yeah, yeah, yeah. Peacekeeper, peacemaker, whatever they call it. Um, peacemaker, right, right. But yeah, yeah. He's definitely got like that U.S. agent, anti Captain America thing going on. Um, he was full Terminator towards the end. Like I, I was not expecting the plot twist where uh, he's basically Waller's lapdog. Well, the hardest thing he said, and it's not about the bag of dicks. The hardest thing he said. <laughs> was that uh he said if i have to kill every man woman and child it's like that that's mm-hmm. when you know this motherfucker is hard like that's when you know like right. you know someone to, to like and that makes sense that too because like you know waller does like psychological profiles on everybody so she would pick like the most patriotic dude to be like her her inside person and they changed him because in the comics he wasn't as much of a villain as he is in here. Like he he's like really hardcore, but in the comics, well, he wasn't that bad. Like honestly, mm-hmm. not at all. He was a part of the new 
uh, rendition of the Suicide Squad before the film came out uh, mm-hmm. recently that I've read, but he wasn't at all like this. So that really threw me off. I loved how he fits in. A, like the costumes here are amazing, right? Uh, the toilet bowl helmet. Um, but he's going to get his own series. I, I forgot what the series is called. Don't quote me on this, but I seen a teaser poster and I think the series is called Fuck It's Peacekeeper or Peacemaker. <laughs> it's like Fuck It's Peacemaker or something. I, I that's I think that's what it's called. It's mm-hmm. going to premiere on HBO Max uh, in January 2022. And also mm-hmm. it's going to be an eight episode mini series. It might. Oh, OK. Yeah. Or mini mini season. Actually, well, that there makes sense. Because like I was wondering well. why they kept him around like towards the end credit scene. Yeah, it's gonna it delve into his backstory. It's it's gonna delve into his backstory. It's gonna delve into the Vigilante, which is another character, obscure character that I really love in DC Comics. He's gonna make an appearance. I seen a le- le- a leaked photo of his costume actually recently, so it looks really dope. But uh, like, I like I like Vigilante. I know he's pretty. I like his costume is pretty cool too. So I I hope to see him too. What do you think of Harley? I mean, that's like it's kind of you know Harley. We gotta talk about my girl Margot Robbie. <laughs> you know we right. can't. Like <laughs> she's a, she's always great you know what i she's mean she's great she you know she brings all the charm and like right the night that naivete to the movie um but i feel like she's matured a lot um from her last couple movies you can tell a lot too like when she uh when she shoots that that guy <laughs> yeah i know like she's she's definitely learned her lessons from that was a jump these. scare for me too i was like oh <laughs> i was not expecting that yo yeah. <laughs> that's the thing like this movie like I, I kind of go into this movie like expecting the unexpected, but right. then when like shit happens, it's like it's like in your face, like it just like boom, it's there, and it's like yeah. oh fuck. <laughs> so you know, again, I just I just love James Gunn's choices so much. Yeah, and and see, I have this weird thing with DC. I think DC is doing the wrong thing when it when it comes to creating their own universe. They started off bad, right? They started off really separate, so. The Flash will remedy this, obviously. But, like, for her, like, even a back tattoo change, which is a retcon, because to change a tattoo, you got to fucking get a cover-up or, like, get right. laser removal or whatever. But, like, it says uh, property of no one. It used to say property of Joker. Um, and it says live... What was it? Live something, die clown, in the back of her jacket. Okay, yeah. So it's like... It's like well, maybe you know, she got it removed, and then she got a new one. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> sure. You know her life. <laughs> hey, it's the DC movie, whatever. In between movies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. It's like, and, and actually, it's funny, because she actually made it back to the Suicide Squad team, uh, mm-hmm. just because apparently she was, uh, she had road rage and, and inside a bank, she said, so that was really funny. Oh, really? But yeah, I, and like Cassandra Kane, what happened with her? That's like supposed to be the protege. Of mm-hmm. Harley Quinn, apparently, at the end of Birds of Prey. But, um, oh, yeah, she always brings it. I, I think she was awesome here. And I'm glad that everyone has equal footing. I'm glad mm-hmm. that it doesn't feel like a Harley Quinn movie, you know? If 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 anything, it kind of feels like the, the lead, the lead, lead can be kind of blood sport. Uh, but that's just because he has motivations that they showed, right? Um, other than that, everyone feels like they have equal footing which is even king well i guess not really king shark but kind of you know it's just it's it's that great thing where like everyone's leveled right so it's not so unbelievable to have rat catcher at the end save the day to have all those rats come out because we could say oh yeah she is op you know we kind of mistaken her for somebody that doesn't really do much mm-hmm. um even polka dot man i mean if you give pokemon but uh, pokemon man if you give polka dot <laughs> man his uh his chance which i hate it and i guess we'll talk more about like some gripes that we had with the movie later on, but mm-hmm. uh, he's everyone's like bringing their all, really. Um, yeah, so yeah, it's like you said, there's like great balance between all the characters. You know, everybody gets their their time to shine, even Milton. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> felt sorry rip, for rip to Milton. <laughs> I'm so glad, that's my thing. That's like James Gunn will so do that. I'm so glad that badass walk had Milton right. and, and and like <laughs> the far right of the screen. Right. Even um, what's his name? Peter Capaldi's uh, the thinker. Like every time cool. he was on screen, yeah, he definitely yeah. like he, he brought, brought that like he brought that mad scientist aspect. I love that so much because he plays a uh, he plays Doctor Who, right? Well, the Doctor and Doctor Who. So yeah, he's he's a great uh, actor. Seriously, yeah, he has that dialect, and I just love how he's like. I feel like we're forgetting just like a lot of people. <laughs> well, I mean, it's just you know, even like the president of 
mm-hmm. Corto Maltese at first, that charming type of guy um, that I kind of wish that he was really sympathetic and then we figured out he wasn't. And, and even if he had a short role still, mm-hmm. um, the general seemed to be worse uh, later on that became president. I, I remember him. He's like in a lot of stuff. He's He was in a strain. He was like in a lot. And he always plays a general. He was in a... What's I think he called? was in Quantum of Solace. Yeah, I was just going to say that. He was there playing I, with I, another guy. General. I was like, why does he look so familiar? And then he put right. like, the cap on and he's got the general off. I was like, oh, fuck. I think I see him in uh, Quantum of Solace. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. I was like, ah, uh, I like him a lot. Um, I think everyone brung their own. Even, uh, oh, fuck. The, uh, the one chick who plays uh, the revolutionary girl, she was in Predator. Yeah, I loved her. I, I, that Predator was so random. Off off me. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Predator, uh, yeah, no, she's great. She could be like a Predator awesome. crossover because she's like in the jungle. <laughs> she's just a sniper. Yeah, she she's she great. never left the island. <laughs> you just see Arnie's like corpse in the background. <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> great crossover here. Yeah, I, I everyone everyone was really good here. Everyone, Even Viola Davis, like oh Viola Davis, yeah, like especially when she got mad when everyone was disobeying mm. her. It's like you that's motherfucker. Like, that's like sh- I hated Waller more in this movie than. She just she's making too many like bad choices, but I, I guess that's how good of an actress she is that I make her hate her so much in this. Well, in this it's movie. not even it's not even bad. She is a villain in a way, you know. And in a comic, she's like, I guess. Well, the first Suicide she's a Squad she's movie, a necessary evil. Yeah. Well, in the first Suicide Squad movie, she's not as bad as she is in the comics. Here, she's getting a little closer, but in the comics, she's still worse. Um, she she'll do what she's like peacemaker basically. Same thing. Um, but covering up more government antics and whatnot. Right. Um, I, I, she always brings it. I love Viola. Um, no matter what. I'm surprised she didn't like do that same thing from the first Suicide Squad movie where she just shot everybody. Like after she woke up, she just shot everybody. I was like, damn. So did she know, did she realize that she was wrong? Or probably it's because, you know, she's in a government facility. She can't obviously do that. You know, she's not that stupid to well, kill Well, they everybody. blackmailed her too. You know, well, blackmail the government. I mean, for her, it's like, She's just trying to keep the peace for the government. I, I mean, guess. at the end of the day, like, like they save lives, so it it brings good rep to the American government and and the Task Force X project. But they're not so. safe, you know. That's that's a suck part. Like how I I could picture them just escaping. Uh, yeah, that's I the guess. thing. Like she doesn't she doesn't like people having like one ups on her. So I feel like her whole team is gonna suffer for it in some way man boomy my my guy captain <laughs> boomerang i love jai Courtney, oh gosh Raquel, yo captain boomerang and we might as well talk about like our 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 favorite our, not favorite but uh saddest deaths in this movie favorite death. so, what was it for you was it was it oh you said rick flag right oh yes i yeah rick flag because i love i think his name is joel kinnaman now that i yeah. remember mm-hmm. um yeah, I just love the actor. He's very, he's very natural. Like, I feel like I could see him, like, ran in, like, in a random corner store in Philly one day. He's like, he's that type of guy. I don't know. It's just like, he's so, like, natural. I just you want to shake his hand or some shit? Yeah, it's like, oh, hey, you doing, man? Yeah, you know, I'm just buying milk. If he was my waiter, I'd tip him, like, 20%. <laughs> yeah. I just, like, I, obviously, that's, like, the most impactful death, I think. But aside from that, I mean, Captain Boomerang. Uh, hands down, Captain Boomerang, because I want to see more of him. And like later, like the Flash, mm. whatever. See, well, maybe again, Flash is remedying a lot of things, so maybe we'll see him in a different rendition. Mm. Um, but I just love. I that's the I give credit to David Ayer and and like the designers there. I love the redesigns that they did with each character, aside from Joker. I love like all the redesigns that they did. Like I like that thing with like Harley's like tattooed and stuff like that. But anyway. Mm. Enough nonsense. How about you? What's your saddest death? It's either Rick Flagg or, or Polka Dot, man. I feel like that wasn't really necessary that they had to kill him off. They again. did him dirty. Yeah, they did him dirty. They did that him so fun. dirty, yo. He was yeah. like yeah. on his A game in the last moment. Like he was all proud and happy and shit. And yeah. I was like the first time like he might have smiled in like the whole movie. <laughs> Basically, yeah. And then um, they just like and then just Starro just like stomps the fuck out of him and just like, oh come on, man. He was such a great character. You could have like kept him around for like at least another movie or something. <laughs> and yeah, they disrespected him there. <laughs> yeah, I feel like there's there's more. I I, I was scared because I thought the rat was gonna die the whole movie. <laughs> I expected I want, it. Yeah. I wanted that uh, I forget his name. He probably had a name. <laughs> But yeah, that that rat was definitely like the MVP. He was definitely the mascot 
for the whole time. Oh, man. <laughs> and watching he's, like yeah. like Idris get scared of him like, at the end, sport, that was funny, like yeah, the whole man. time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that's so funny to me. <laughs> Just like because <laughs> he's fighting fucking like monsters and I know uh, <laughs> militaries and shit, and then he's like scared of fucking rats and shit. <laughs> Basically, yeah. I mean, that's. I guess again, that's that's the genius from James Gunn. It's like Bloodsport whole thing is his armor is the weapon. And the comics weapons teleport in his hand. So here, you know, mm. obviously I don't know how the hell he must be somehow, you know, kind of engineer to make those type of weapons. But like, you know, at the end, he's shedding those weapons, right? And so I guess the I guess the metaphor, I don't know, is he's shedding he's shedding that hostility that he has inside himself. He's saying that he's a bad man. And so he's getting Mm. rid of every weapon later on at the Mm -hmm. end. And he's actually becoming more uh, harmless and harmless to the other guys. Cause as you see, he couldn't do shit against the mob of like Starro infected people. And Mm -hmm. then plus with the rats, you know, overgoing him. um, Apparently the song is called raptism. Uh, That was the, yeah. So, and he's getting showered with rats, right? So it's like a raptism. So then at the end of the movie, he's like touching a rat. And so he's kind of getting rid of that fear of rats. So that's that's the genius of James Gunn is that little moments like that that we love, it, it, it means big for the characters, right? So I think that's why it's he's... Great analysis. Big. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. It's just like, it's it's wonderful. Um, But yeah, definitely... I, I really thought that the rat would die, though. I was really... I, was really, <laughs> I, thought, I was thinking like, damn, a lot of rats are about to drown in Star Wars Eye. Right. Okay. Let's talk about how nasty Starro was too. I didn't expect oh my this God, little yeah. like that, uh, or the, like the side things, like the well, Starro. Thing. I'm surprised, like, because I when you talk about Starro, like, I always think of like the Silver Age Starro, where it's like he's just this Justice League, this giant starfish. Yeah, it, yeah. Like, it looks corny on paper, but they somehow made it work because, yeah. like, it's only like this type of movie where they can make cheesy elements feel like grounded in reality. So yeah. I think they did a lot of great job with like the exposition in the beginning with the thinker, um, explain like his backstory where like he's drifting through space and then he they just like picked him up, and then like experimented on him, and then he's actually terrifying, like when he actually like gets released and then you get like all these like little uh, starfish face huggers come out and then they just <laughs> I always get sad too like when uh I was watching that scene where um. The general, he's like looking around, and everybody's just like getting face hugged and shit. And he's just like, oh, he's like Thanos. He just like sits down. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> just realizes, it's all right. Fuck it, I'm done. <laughs> he, he just dusts, right? He just, you see dust coming from <laughs> right. But it's terrifying because, like, for a good minute, like, like Starro is like fucking up the city and like taking over everybody, and then they're like just about to leave, and just like you hear like the screams of everybody in the city, and it's just like, oh fuck, like. You just realized, like, the shit went to, like, 100. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I was like, and this this film's, like, obviously definitely way bigger than I feel like. I didn't like the villains from the first movie. Again, this isn't a soft reboot, per se, nor is it a remake. It's just a continuation without, uh, you know, kind of connecting towards the mm. last movie, right? So let's just turn a blind eye, kind of, and let's, you know, go a different way. Um, Because I think that the last movie was the lowest rating in Rotten Tomatoes. I'm not too sure. But, um... Yeah, the last one, I didn't like the villains too much. So this one felt a lot more bigger and grander in scale. Um, mm-hmm. So Star Wars definitely was scary. Um, I, I Like, I kind of seen spoilers before I seen the movie that Star Wars was going to be the main villain. I think that was obvious for a lot of people. And in a way, it's kind of it kind of like foils um, Guardians 2 in a way. Because you, you got two different villains, right? You got the... Uh, like, yeah, in Guardians 2, you've got... Um, what are they called? Those Those gold people... Uh, I forgot their names now. I forgot her name. We always like well, blinding. What do we do? Aisha, <laughs> Aisha. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, Aisha and then you, something, yeah. yeah, and then you have ego. So you've got like the more, um, the more human like villains, and then you've got like the more like I guess, uh, grander threat going right, on. So right. in this movie, it feels kind of similar because you've got the the Quartz Maltese militia, and then you've got like Star, which is like the bigger, grander. So another hallmark of James Gunn, I guess. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, everything, it just felt, and you know, the thing is, it felt so complete of a movie. Um, you know, I felt I felt extremely satisfied with it, honestly. It just felt, like, really complete. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, because when it's so balanced, when you do it like that, uh, even, like, the music, like, choices, too, were all Oh, the some... score? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And was, the pacing's so really fun. nice for me, too. The pacing's really nice. Like, 
it doesn't feel like too cut up like it's a good transition like when they're not fighting you get a lot of exposition with the characters mm. um and then when they are fighting you know you get like those great action scene doesn't feel too chopped up um, well here's the thing too it's like in the first movie they had a bar scene right I was like, I was thinking in my head, I was like, all right, so Amanda Waller's just fucking waiting somewhere, uh, having a cup of coffee or something, and these people are drinking a beer or whatever, and it's like, <laughs> they just randomly pause there, but here, it makes sense, because it takes over the course of, like, maybe a day or two or whatever, um, and it just makes sense, so, like, the choices that they made, like, the path, just going along the road made more sense, mm -hmm. whereas, you know, in the first Suicide Squad movie, it was just, like, it was just really weird, you know what I mean? It kind of felt like a video game where it's like, oh, I'm actually playing through the, a one day, you know what I mean? But I'm doing all this shit, visiting a hub or something like that. But, you know, so yeah. here it felt more complete and more concise, I would say. I feel like the first one, they were trying too hard to, like, fill people in on, like, backstories. And then it's just, like, yeah. and then you're you're kind of, like, forgetting about, like, what the movie's actually about. Here it's kind of like, all right, we got this task. But as we're going, like, we see how the characters' M.O.s drive the plot forward. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and I think with Ratcatcher, we got more, you know, just, just more lore, I guess, backstory for her. But it wasn't something that was, like, cutting up. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't disrupting the pace. It was really just, uh, it was emotional, right, in the right way, right? Because it was supposed to be. And so obviously, you see it at the end, how it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But like with Harley Quinn, like they showed back. Obviously, we want to see backstory about Harley Quinn. That's like a fan favorite character. Right. And a Joker. Like I mean, we don't even need that much because we've got so many like movies of her. And it's like everybody knows who she is. So I feel like it's good that they didn't do too much of her. Well, it depends like, on how they do it, though, because it depends on the changes that they make. Right. Because there is they obviously films take some certain liberties with certain mm -hmm. characters like Jared Leto's Joker for smashed teeth and stuff like maybe one day we could see how he got smashed teeth and replaced him with metal or whatever. So like certain things like that, um, I mean, like, I don't care. I, I like for Batman, I kind of get tired of seeing it. Right. Because there's been so many live action before Harley. I never seen a live action Harley Quinn. So it's like I, I didn't mind see some backstory, but I was so dissatisfied with it. Right. And with Jared Leto's Joker, his Joker was like, babe, there's no problem with it. It's just it seems like he's like a YouTuber trying to make a fan film right or like he's trying to talk e-boy <laughs> like yeah like yeah exactly exactly he's trying to emulate uh the joker but it's like he's acting too much and you know what i mean um so i think that the, that's why they're trying to i felt that because i feel like he wasn't acting enough <laughs> i was like no he he really got into the mindset but it wasn't the mindset of the Joker how it should have been. You know what I mean? It, it was really a different type of mindset. But like here with this Suicide Squad, um, everything felt really natural for character development. You know what I mean? Everyone wasn't really trying to put on a show. Everyone was kind of trying to keep their personalities low key. And it felt real natural. That's why I'm saying it's so concise of a, of a film. And I think so. I think James Gunn did a great job. I want to see what he does with uh, Fuck It's Peacemaker. Um, I just want to see it. That's what I, I hope that is the name, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> you want to watch fuck is peacemaker, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but, uh, that's such a badass name too. Like you just see this motherfucker, John Cena behind you said, fuck is peacemaker. <laughs> and he just shoots you. What a joke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. See, here's my theory too. It's like, what if he remembers what Rick Flagg said, like peacemaker, what a joke, right? And he mm. just realized, like, when he's in the hospital, because he did fuck up, too, trying to kill Ratcatcher, right? But what if he realized he failed so much that it's true he has to go about this a different way? I don't know, because you can't make a show about such a hateable character, right, mm -hmm. at that moment for it to be successful. You kind of have to, because even for villains like Loki, right, you kind of have to give them that that um, that arc later on to break down that character and really give new motivations. So he could still be an anti-hero. Everyone's an anti-hero, really. Um, but yeah, I'm excited for what James Gunn... Well, he's going to do Guardians next. Uh, mm -hmm. But I wanted to ask you, if you don't have any more points, do you have any more points to make before I ask you this? Um, well, the transitions were really smooth. I did like the, like, the oh, title yeah. cards. Oh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. I feel like that really like kept track of where we were going through a whole movie. It feels like you're reading like a chapter in a book, like the... Like when you see the elevator button, it's like dirty little secrets. It's like, okay, so it's like a hint of like what's going to happen next. So I really like that. Like I think he does that in Guardians too. Like you see like with the different planets and stuff. So I don't know. I just like that a lot. That was, Anything that for was you? Smooth. Um, 
again, besides the imagery, like the just the color palette, uh, again, we went into that already. But I think that was like one of, it was really, it, I think in terms of camera work and just overall aesthetic, I think that it was an A+. Plus. Um, it hit it yeah, right I, saw, I saw it at IMAX. It was fucking beautiful. Like, yeah. and I know you probably watched it on HBO Max. Yeah, but, I, I watched HBO Max, but still, it looks great. And, and I mean, it just and every the CGI was like so good. Oh yeah, with the so polka dot man and everything and Starro. Everything, oh my god, everything. Yeah. King Shark, it's beautiful. Like like King Shark's like I, when uh, Ratcatcher was talking to uh, him about you don't eat your friends, right, or something. Right. <laughs> you see his little, you see his little shark eyes look at her like that. Right. Oh my god. <laughs> And like when he I fell, know. that's the thing too. It's like I felt bad because he thought he found fish friends and then he fell from that building and all of a mm. sudden like you see one tear come out, like he's betrayed, <laughs> whatever. Right. So it's like, you know, um, yeah, it's it's a it's a it's a very gory mm. experience too. And the comedy just works so well in this movie. Like oh, it's such absolutely. a it's such a good yeah. balance of like action and comedy. Like Marvel, I feel like they try too hard nowadays to do that and sometimes it falls flat. But James Gunn knows how to work it. Like, they're like, like that, <laughs> like that, like there's literally scenes of like people just killing people and it's just funny. Like John yeah. Cena when he's fucking cutting oh, yeah. up the, <laughs> the dude on the sleep. <laughs> I was cracking the fuck up. I told. <laughs> and they went hard in that camp, just, that poor camp. <laughs> oh my God. I was like, <laughs> I was cracking up because they were like, I knew they were like the freedom fighters. And then, like right. when they when they finally reveal it, and it's like, oh yeah, we didn't see. Like even the rat was lying. He was like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's basically John Cena fucking our podcast right now. Nope. Just my... <laughs> 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 that's awesome. Um, yeah, so that's definitely a plus. Yeah, the action is great too. I mean, one thing I said in a review I did recently was that I felt like it was a little bit choppy uh, at certain aspects, right? Because everything. Uh, felt really wide aspect ratio um so that was cool i'm not talking about that more so i'm talking about uh this thing called gung fu and so it's like certain moments for gung fu like with harley uh felt a little Definitely, bit yeah played with on harley. you know yeah. a little bit like oh let me grab your hand and you can't do anything with the other hand because you're disoriented right. okay and let me get you like that so i just mm. didn't like that and then plus it was like you know because the thing is the rule of thumb is when you have too many edits in a fight scene or whatever, um, that means there's a lack of choreography, or there's a lack of let's really try this out. You know, um, let's go hard with it. So like, well, certain... I think at the same time, like they, you know, obviously you're gonna have a lot of edits because you have to keep within the time frame of the movie. You know, if it's like a two hour movie, you have to keep it within two hours. So I, I kind of get where that is. I, I didn't feel like too chopped up or edit overly edited. Um, definitely like the scenes were like Rick Flag and Peacemaker. You can kind of see it. Like when there's like certain moments where it's like cuts really quickly. But I was better. Yeah. 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 But you you still like saw like the fights like happening. That so was it didn't better. feel too yeah, bad. Yeah. But I, I, I see what you're saying about like, you know, sometimes it feels like a little choppy. Yeah, like a little bit like Jason Bourne or something like that. Like when she had oh, the not javelin. That bad. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> not but bad. like no, but like when she was like with that cage stuff or whatever, it was just like it oh, came yeah. off it can't like some stuff like that, it's just like a thing that it just came off annoying. I don't know. It's just like that and then it's just like too fake mm -hmm. or whatever. I, I don't know, but that's just my thing. Um and rip rip to uh beefed up JK Simmons. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah and the, the torture what was he thing. texting <laughs> he was no, like... you know what's the thing the guy so because i know spanish so the guy was asking what are you doing right mm. get to hace what are you doing <laughs> and if for no reason there was like all these emojis and <laughs> the guy wrote emojis i didn't forget to understand it he took his time to he find... did like well i saw like an electrocuting thing i was like is he, is he texting that he's torturing somebody right? i don't know he's he definitely didn't know like he was like really looking for specific emojis just to get his point across i don't know but uh he's, he was texting neiman <laughs> yeah <laughs> or mark <laughs> you're <laughs> done <laughs> oh, oh <my> man <laughs> but what are what i wanted to ask you is what is your gripes with the movie not too many i mean with this type of movie, it doesn't take itself too seriously. So in that style of filmmaking, I don't really look too hard or like nitpick. Um, I mean, like I said, there was like certain moments where like I feel like you didn't need to kill off certain characters, especially in the beginning. I feel like certain characters didn't need to die off that quickly, especially if we didn't really like get that much backstory off of them. Um, 
Yeah, not much to say. I don't know. How about you? What What do you feel? Um. Yeah, I don't have too many gripes. Uh, it was an enjoyable experience, I think, through and through. Um, I already said that thing about choreography or whatever. I mean, that's really about it. I, well, again, some things you have to really suspend your disbelief, but I think it's hard for normal moviegoers and people who aren't fans of the genre and in the first place, but watch it. Like, for example, like there's certain things like they were trying to run, uh, you know, when, when the building was collapsing, right? It's like the floor is literally wet, yet it's they're running up this type of ramp yeah. right? and you're not going to slip or yeah. a bloodshot like, or I'm sorry, bloodshot. I just mixed the two. Uh, Bloodsport basically is hanging on to the side of the building and like they're shooting mm. the hell out of that building, but he doesn't get hit somehow. It's like certain things like that. Uh, it's kind of hard to spend your disbelief. Uh, but uh, you know, if you just look mm-hmm. past it, I, I think it was, it's a really solid movie. So and like again, I said, I, it, it doesn't take itself too seriously. So that's stuff I yeah. can like overlook. Cause it's, it's kind of like, it's supposed to be goofy in a way, but yeah. like a, like a gory like goofy you know yeah it's a mess you know what's funny it's 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 purposely a mess a colorful beautiful ugly mess but it it's so warming you know uh mm-hmm. so heartwarming um it has a lot of soul you could tell mm-hmm. and so that's what i enjoyed about it so definitely- and even like the political moments that they threw in there i feel like work well because that that feels like it could be like a real you know event that happened sure it is <laughs> So, <laughs> so even like when they threw in the political regime stuff in there, yeah. I don't know, it, it worked kind of well with how the plot, it didn't feel like it was just there just to be there. Yeah, definitely. I definitely yeah. agree with you. Well, that's great. So at a one to 10, what would you rate this? Uh, solid nine. Yeah, me too. That's what I did in my review, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> 10 for me has to be like perfect, but I mean... It's close. It's close. Maybe like 9.5, but it's it's really up there. But I think it's going to stay near and dear to my heart, honestly. Yeah. I, f- I really feel like this is my favorite DC Extended to, Universe uh, Yeah, film. I have to rewatch it a couple times because sometimes, like, I just... I, I always, like, rate high when I'm in the hype of things. Me too. <laughs> that's why I rewatched it a second time, and that's when I just realized... Uh, I still rated it at 9, but that's when I realized, oh, yeah, there are some things where, like, you have to really try mm-hmm. hard to suspend your disbelief. Yeah. Um, and but, I think it's just like I've been watching too many crap movies lately, so this felt mm-hmm. like breath of fresh air for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I, I saw Snake Eyes, and that was just oh god. <laughs> <laughs> Let me not even talk about that. But <laughs> oh, yeah, and again, it's it's for me one of the best extended DC extended movies. And I hope that the Flash, the Flash is all about heart. You know, it's all about family too. So mm-hmm. I really hope that that carries the momentum of of just heartwarming moments and, and just that's the thing. The I moment. feel like yeah, I feel like these DC movies just. Need to like stick with a theme for each movie and then just mm. stay with that motif. Like like Shazam, like you got the motif of like family. Um, they kind of like have that in Man of Steel too. So this one is kind just kind of like do whatever the fuck they want, but it still works. <laughs> it works, yeah. And again, credits to James Gunn because I feel like if you hired somebody else, it'll be completely different. Yeah, it'd be completely different, but it yeah. wouldn't even come close. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I this can, is... maybe like yeah, like I said, like Tarantino could pull it off, but like not in the way that James Gunn can. He knows how to like balance all his characters together. He puts the heart in, you know what I mean. He really puts he he really put put all all he had into this. So I really mm-hmm. appreciate that. Yeah, so I love the movie. I'm sure. Yeah, definitely. People it feels like a like a like an anti Avengers movie almost. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I swear man. to God, there was like one moment where uh where uh Bloodsport he goes to King Shark, he's like nom nom, and then uh King Shark like jumps like the Hulk. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was a, <laughs> that's a great comparison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hulk <laughs> smash. <laughs> King Shark just looks and like smiles and then just jumps. <laughs> that feels like yeah, that feels like an anti like like Avengers or Marvel movie. I don't know. But yeah, overall, I, I really enjoyed this film. Um, definitely not out of 10. I agree. I agree. Well, that about wraps up our review of Suicide Squad. As always, we'd like to thank you for listening and supporting our channel. If you like this discussion, be sure to follow us as next episode, we'll be talking about Marvel's upcoming show, What If, which drops on Disney Plus August 11th. So you guys won't want to miss that. I'm excited to talk about that. Check us out. It's going to be great. We're going to go into it, though. So beware of spoilers. <laughs> so be sure to follow us on Spotify, YouTube, Anchor, Instagram, and Twitter, which are all linked in the description. 
Until next time, guys. Thanks for having lunch with us. See you later.